Ah, I see you're back here again for another part of the story. Uh, it's a bit nasally today, and I apologize about that. I can't stop sneezing. Just, Nurgle won't let me go, it seems. But let's go ahead and move on to what you came here for, shall we? Journal Entry 131 After all this time, I still wake up some mornings thinking it's all been a dream. Nope. Still here. So we have begun the process of kidnapping compromised members of the spy network and instilling some loyalty through mind rape, mind rape, and beatings. I'm actually disturbed by some of this shit. I'm rewriting parts of these people's lives in a few of these cases. It's incredibly draining too, to the point where I started bleeding a few times. I hadn't done that in a while. Needed a few rest periods to recover. I'm still looking for some way to escape the situation without drawing too much attention or ire. Wandering around town is easy enough. The guard long gave up looking for the escaped prisoner, and they didn't even have a good idea of what I looked like or any personal information. I'm still a fugitive from the church, but that's on hold as long as I'm under the Ryan graphs. The church is kind of taken as a personal insult that I keep escaping them. Initially, I was just Avery's pet redemption project. Now they've convinced themselves that I'm some kind of criminal mastermind that's insulting their god and shitting all over everything they stand for. Yeah, their magic tattoos have worn off, but their motivations are too deep-seated to wipe away in passing. It would take a whole mind rape session to clear that away. Journal Entry 132 So I got brought along to some royal ball the king was hosting. It wasn't in his castle, no. He has a whole separate building for stuff like this well away from the castle. The Rhinegraphs wanted me there for information gathering. Nothing too intrusive. They were all there, dressed in their latest fashionable imports. I had to wear some absurd outfit with multiple sleeves and feathers. There's music and fancy noble food, most of which I wanted nothing to do with. Stuffed mice, various bird tongues, some kind of bone pudding. At least they had seafood. I can deal with that. Lots of alcohol, elven wines, dwarf brews, even some rare margarita knockoff from the south. So the party took place in some huge ballroom with lots of mirrors. Mirrors are pretty rare, so this is some kind of show of wealth. There's more to it though. I was sensing people behind the mirrors, watching. The king never made a public appearance. He may have been one of the ones behind the mirrors. I did hear some gossip, pick some minds. Apparently Winterfield is a huge mess. With no royalty, the advisors tried taking power, and then one of the generals seized control and tried forming a military junta. Last word anyone's heard from them sounded like the civil war is about to kick off, with the barbarians approaching. They did get another airship though. Someone else must have noticed the gap and filled it. Anyways, after the party, I dumped all the info I got on the spy master, and he's been sorting through it for anything relevant. Journal Entry 133 I managed to escape freedom. I can feel the proverbial collar slip free of my neck. It feels so good. So the spy master took me out of the city to run a loyalty test on the Rhinegraf cattle and horse farm. Some of the news we picked up at the ball seemed to indicate that there was a skim going for one of the other houses. That place, apparently, was a recent acquisition and maybe old loyalties die hard. So we get out there. It's less than a mile from the city and pretty safe. Has regular guard patrols. The workers all come out and look scared as shit. Word's gotten around. It suddenly occurred to me. The guard patrol won't be around for another hour. It's me and the spy master. Some farmhands and the farm accountant. Bang, bang. He took one in the head and one in the chest. He falls over and then just up and disappears. The workers scatter to the wind and I ran in the other direction. I have a general idea of where the orc war camps are. I'll head there and see whatever happened to the rest of my team. Journal Entry 134 I'm camped out in a small cave in a ravine. I didn't think this through. No food, no water, it's starting to snow. Sure, I could try hunting with my pistol, but I have no knife. I managed to start a fire using some tree branches, dry leaves, and my taser. I should have enough wood for the night, but it's so cold. I'm going to try and melt some snow for water once enough falls. Hopefully, I'll reach a camp tomorrow. 
Journal Entry 135 I lucked out and stumbled into one of the orc patrols. They had heard of me and I was dragged back to the war camp and put in front of high command. I was presumed dead and put out of mind, but now I had to convince them I wasn't a spy. That took a while. I gave up as much information as I could on the situation of Wolf Lake. Afterwards, they set me loose on the camp. I found the others. I'm glad to see them, and they are the same. They thought I was dead, and they left me behind in their retreat. I'm sure it felt like I was at the time. They're doing well. Marcus has some scars he seems to think will impress the ladies. Mike's doing fine, but he's pale as a sheet. Jason, ultimately, lost his eye. But one of the camp spellcasters gave him a replacement. More or less a ruby jammed in a vacant eye socket. He says he can see better than fine with it. It's creepy as hell looking though. I told him of my time in Wolf Lake, about Avery, and her news on the others, about the Rhinegrafts, and my escape. We watch strange days. I'm about to sleep. I'll find out what the war is doing from this side's perspective in the morning. Journal Entry 136 This is a war of attrition. The Wolf Lake armies are winning the battles but taking such heavy losses that they can't easily resupply, especially with most of their ground supply lines broken by the orc rays. The orcs, on the other hand, have yet to have a decisive victory. The battles are usually routes with most of the survivors retreating. They can bring in replacements easier, mercenaries, but that can't go on forever. The cavalry is adapting nicely to the stirrups, but there aren't enough of them to make a big difference and they've been taking heavy losses from enemy phalanxes and archer lines. Since I've last been here, they managed to get some artillery, catapults. They've been using them to launch tar-covered burning hay bales into the phalanxes during the opening salvos. Too bad we can't get our hands on some alchemist's fire. It's some variant of Greek fire slash napalm. It's apparently hard to come by out here. They also just got a shipment of especially trained war dogs. Big, nasty things, trained to go after anyone with the Wolf Flake symbol on them and follow verbal orders. I got a new sword, a long sword. It's seen better days. The blacksmith described it as experienced. Journal Entry 137 It's been a few days. I've been out with a raiding party of about 30 mercenaries, mostly human. We're sacking a trade caravan heading in from Kinnild by land. I almost feel like a bandit. We're camped out off the side of the road under heavy brush, snow, in a ditch, and waiting. It's pretty boring. A few of the guys are light sleepers and taking a nap, even though it's bleeding cold out. The rest of us are keeping ourselves entertained with war stories while watching the road. We have a few two-man patrols making sure no one is sneaking up on us. No idea how big this caravan is, or even what it's carrying, just that there is one. One of the mercs has some heating stone. Stays a new warm temperature he's been using to keep his hands warm. I gotta get me one of those. My Terran compatriots are back at camp. They're learning to ride horses, and I feel all left out. It's kind of funny. Our big plan was to get to Rosenbridge and free our friends, but they aren't even there anymore. Alex would have just missed us. Avery's gone native. The others are who knows where and probably in a bad situation, as they were slaves last Avery heard. I guess the next goal after this war is the Wild Lake slave pens and then wherever they've gone. I'll be pissed if they got sent to Winterfield or Alien, running in fucking circles. Journal Entry 138 We ransacked the caravan alright. Ten guards and twenty or so merchants, staff and passengers. Most of the guards went down, only two surrendered and they didn't even put up a fight. Our prisoners are being stripped of valuables and being sent to another camp to be ransomed back. Our cargo hall looks to be food supplies, smithing ingots, spices, what I thought was mage regions, clothes, and a chest of gold coins. Bribe money? Taxes? Why is it heading towards Wolf Lake? I felt I had to know. So I poked around in some of the survivors' minds. This caravan was a shipment for the Church of the Sun worshippers from one of their larger central cathedrals. They don't do their own caravans, they use third parties. <laughs> Whoops for them. If they ever find out I was involved in this, <laughs> I can't let Avery read my journal next time she catches me. Part of me is worried, part of me can't stop laughing. So we're heading back to the war camp with our riches. Should be a two day ride. We're certainly more armed than their original guard retinue. Wait, why is the church getting money? 
They operate on tithes, cleric services, and don't pay taxes. And the caravan drivers don't know anything about it. Something's funny. Journal Entry 139. I'm learning to ride a horse. We're still on the way back, and I've already fallen off twice. Luckily, didn't get injured. No stirrups, of course. So I've been thinking of what else I can do for the war effort, just to tip the balance. I'm sure Jason and myself could rig up some kind of scale model trebuchet for them to learn from, but that's more of a siege machine than battlefield artillery. Maybe the Chinese repeating crossbow, but I don't actually know how that works. I really don't want to introduce gunpowder. It's easy enough to make. They have most of the ingredients back at camp. Hell, we have the ingredients to make some here in the region's crates and the caravan we're taking back. Anyways, the York Cavalry is starting an experiment with the horseback archery. Maybe the- Oh, fuck! Journal Entry 140. I met with some of the others as soon as we got back to the camp. I dragged them over to the caravan, and we went through the materials. Between the ingots, the regents, we figure there's enough to build one simple cannon and fire it multiple times. Does that mean the gold is to pay a smith to make it? What's going on here? Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe Avery told them things she knows this world is not ready for. If this was to be given to the Wolf Lake army to copy, that would be very bad. Okay, so what right do I have to decide what technology the locals can and can't possess? They have magic. At the same time, I've already been irresponsible with handouts. I'm conflicted. Anyways, I gave Jason the go-ahead to see if he can't help the camp bowmaker invent the recurve bow while the rest of us figure out what to do. Journal Entry 141 The recurve project went bust. The bowmaker doesn't have the aptitude or creativity to get what we're just trying to describe. Maybe we need a proper artificer. So we went back to the drawing board and had a long talk. If Wolfley is going to have explosives, then so should we. We aren't going to give them cannons, but we are going to give them gunpowder. We'll show them how to make a ceramic or wooden barrel grenade. Something they can fire from their catapults. Something simple. We'll let its usage evolve on its own from there. There's the high probability that someone is going to blow themselves up from this. Mike and Marcus are mixing the chemicals now to produce the first batch. I've had a lot to think about over the last few days. We're making a bigger and bigger impact on history as time goes on. Is this what we were brought here to do? Journal Entry 142 Well, we held our first demonstration today. We made a small prototype using a clay jar, filled it with metal shavings from the blacksmith, and packed it with black powder. We found a nice safe place and set up some of the training dummies complete with scavenged wolf leg armor. We had Mike light it from his maximum casting range and all took cover. It took a minute before it went off. The York's first reaction was that it was just a big fireball spell anyone could use. Then they examined the area. The armor shredded from shrapnel, wood pulped, some rocks destroyed. I think they got the message that these are not toys. We have enough ingredients to make 20 or more of the hand variants, or 5 big ones for the catapults. They wanted us to make the big ones. High Command doesn't consider us just mercenaries anymore. We now have bodyguards. Journal Entry 143 I'm pretty sure Marcus has developed a relationship with a half-orc girl in one of the orc supply caravans. Every time they show up, he vanishes for a while. Doesn't he remember what happened in Alien? Goddamn bards. So we have our catapult bombs. We sealed them with the wax and buried them in crates near the armory with clear markings so some idiot doesn't accidentally blow the whole thing with a torch. It'll take a directly aimed fire blast to trigger them now. Maybe. <laughs> We'll dig them up when it's wartime. In other news, still learning to ride a horse. I don't even know enough about horses to describe its breed, or Earth approximate breed. All I know is that it's brown, in name Medley. I have no idea why. It certainly doesn't sing. Journal Entry 144 Winter is in full effect. We had a blizzard today. Everything's frozen. At least our camp was set up to avoid the harsher winds. Not a lot to do while sitting around the fire and shivering. So I started asking questions. I was wondering why the orcs never used their own phalanx formation in the war. Many different answers. The simplest answer, it's not their style. They don't care much for the long spears and big shields and tight formations. They rarely use shields, even if they do. But if they do, it's always something small like a buckler. 
Sure, they can withstand physical trauma better than a human, but really. Their tactics are more suited to small-scale tribal conflicts, which makes sense. That's what I've observed so far. Not so good at war, but pretty good at skirmishing. It fits their tribal mentality. If these guys ever get organized into a proper civilization, they'll be a real force to be reckoned with. Journal Entry 145 Well, Marcus got drunk, sat down in the middle of the camp, and sung the entire 50 states capital song, followed by the most hilarious dulcimer rendition of Barracuda. We quietly dragged him back to his tent. I'm good enough on a horse now that I went out on a mounted scout patrol. Important or not, I needed to get out, even if it's freezing cold. I was kind of babied along by the others. Us Terrans have become well known, just like an alien. Speaking of that, I wonder how the invention of the bicycle is going. Anyways, nothing new on patrol. We left sunrise and came back sunset. My hair was nearly frozen, even with a hat. Journal Energy 146 It's cold enough that my pen ink is starting to freeze up. I've been having to hold it over the fire for a bit to get riding again. This may be the last entry for a while. We're hunkered down and practicing for war, holding mock battles and, when we're bored, snow fort fight with the goblins. The trade caravans to Wolf Lake have apparently stopped for now according to our intel. This world doesn't have a Christmas. What a shame. This kind of hit me hard because I realized how little I've thought of my friends and family back home. I'll never see them again. Us Terrans have pretty much become my new family. At least there's that. Journal Entry 147 The spring thaw is finally here, and the ink in my pen is defrosted enough to use again. The war camp is packing up soon, and we'll be on the march. It's time to get this war underway. So, in the interim, I've gotten better at horse riding and sword fighting as has Jason. Mike learned some new tricks and Marcus got his dulcimer tuned. Both metaphorically and not. Anyways, it looks like our precautions on our catapult bombs worked. They're still dry. Good news with that. Our scouts report that Wolf Lake is already on the move, and that they have people with them wearing the iconography of the Sun Worshippers on them. Fucking fantastic. I knew it would come to this. Journal Energy 148. Our first major victory. The Battle of Wolfgate. A tactically important fort right in the middle of the kingdom right on the two main trade roads and supplied by the river and nearby farms. We met the enemy army and they immediately retreated to this area, a better position for them. So we're lining up and they're going into their phalanx. We're about even in numbers, at least 10,000. Spellcasters burning everything they have in the opening volleys, archers firing in high arcs. The sun worshipper paladins and clerics start going through their wounded and bringing them back up. Then we unleash the catapult bombs. We did the math, checked and rechecked the angles. Five fired, five explosions, shrapnel everywhere, right in the middle of their formations. Fear and panic in the air, chaos. Then the cavalry in the first wave hit with their war dogs. It quickly became a one-sided fight. Wolf Lake tried retreating, but were cut off. Prisoners were taken, wounded taken care of. Jason and I spent hours going through the dead looking for Avery. She was luckily taken alive. The battle traumatized her. I'll visit her once she's recovered, and we'll see what's what. Journal Entry 149 We have taken Avery into Terran custody. Marcus, Make, and Jason were excited to see her, and we all sat down and had a long talk around a fire. Avery was furious that we leaked gunpowder to the Yorks. I countered with the captured caravan with the cannon ingredients. She claimed to not know anything about it, just that a new and important church weapon was being delivered, and she was telling the truth. We all sat in silence for a while with that reveal. Someone else leaked a cannon design to the church, either Alex or the others, and this is not good. So I informed Avery that she is a prisoner of war and in our custody and that I was going to take the moral high ground and not chain her to a fucking post or shove a slave crown on her head like she had done to me. As long as she's with us, she's under our protection. Let's see how she likes it. Journal Energy 150 Stop reading my fucking journal, Avery. Then stop leaving it out for me to read. Journal Energy 151 We've reaped anything worth value from the fort and its surrounding lands and burned it all to the ground. 
We then made for the highlands to set up our new war camp while we prepare for battles to come. Avery has not taken well to hard marches. I don't suppose you get a lot of exercise when most of your day is spent on your knees. So we are trying to figure out why the Sun Church threw their hat in the war. Possibly for massive political favors and or donations? Maybe a chance to become the head church of Wolf Lake? Avery has been completely blind to the politics running rampant through Wolf Lake and was shocked to find out she was being shipped to the front lines with her fellow clerics and paladins to lend support. Our camp paladin, a follower of one of the warrior gods, wanted to listen in on this and even he agrees that it doesn't make sense for the Sun Church to have joined up like that. Even he isn't here on official business. He's here because this is what he does. The Sun Worshippers aren't warriors. At least that's not what they've been preaching. Journal Entry 152 We've gotten new materials to produce 10 shrapnel bombs for the catapults. Carefully sealed them and have them in a safe place until we need them and have them under guard. Avery hasn't tried escaping. She's rubbing it in that she can take her punishment and won't go running off of the first opportunity like I did. Yeah, and she isn't chained to a fucking post either, or getting punched around by bored paladins, not to mention the fucking slave crown. I'm not holding grudges. Oh no, not me. So she spent her time wandering around the camp, preaching the word and getting a lot of dirty looks. Then she took Mike aside and had a long talk about his pact. I'm not sure what was said, but they both came out of it pale and quiet. So, the war. Wolf Lake has refused to capitulate, of course, and High Command is deciding where to strike next. I'm always ready to suggest sacking the Rhinegraf holdings. There's always the chance that Wolf Lake will gather all of its forces and come for us instead. So we are gathering our forces up. Our camp grows daily. We've already replaced the numbers lost in the last battle. More recruits. This time, an elven band of archers from the wild elf settlements on the east border, who have also experienced Wolf Lake pacification in the past, and decided that maybe they should get in on this. They don't wear a whole lot and are surprisingly barbaric, but highly disciplined in combat, or so they say. Quite the multiracial band our side is turning into. Journal Entry 153 The Battle of Agonist Field. Finally, a location without the wolf in the title. The area is one of the unfarmable plains in the kingdom. Boulders and rocks that they can't easily break up, so the kingdom put anything that smelled bad here. Leather tanneries, soap making, and so on. The fumes in the area burned everyone's eyes. We didn't even plan on a fight here. We were just passing through when one of the smaller wolf-like armies showed up, also passing through the area. They held their ground, and so did we. Then the fight was on. We set up two of the bomb catapults, archers and casters tossing everything they have, and then we fired the catapults. The enemy pulled into a testudo formation. Really, it didn't help them one bit though. Their formation was blown apart, and cavalry wrecked them before the front line slammed into them. Avery sat out of the battle on the hill with the other non-combatants, but she came down afterwards to give her healing support. Prisoners taken, and nobles sent to be ransomed. We looted the area afterwards and got the hell out of there. Everything smells now. Journal Energy 154. Before we can even get to our next camp location, another small force showed up and pressed to assault. In the hills, no less. Just as normal, everything set up. And right when the expected first exchange of magic and archery is to take place, Wolf Lake goes into a full horde charge. No formation, just a rushing, screaming line. Yeah, there's a reason why that's a bad idea. Without their own casters to defend, ours wrecked their rush, followed by the archers. Half their forces were down by the time they got into melee engagement range. What the fuck is all this about? Most of us never even had to draw our swords. The catapults were never set up. It was a decisive victory. This isn't even desperation. It's suicide. Very few survived, and their story was that they were just following orders. They got convinced that this was the way to beat our catapults. We didn't even find any officers amongst the living or dead. I think they ditched the battle as soon as it started. We set up camp nearby. Avery is burning herself out and healing the injured, but she's still preaching. At least she's helping. Journal Entry 155 Marcus is writing up a song to commemorate the war and the mostly exaggerated heroic deeds of our side. I'd be more impressed if it wasn't ripping off Queen again for the melody. Well, I ran into another scion. 
Apparently the wild elves brought one with them to make sure they weren't being fucked over by the orcs when the war is over. We had a polite conversation and exchanged ideas. I also got a better idea of the elf perspective on this fight. They were descended from one of the earlier groups to fight over this area, over and over and over again, and due to their long lifespans, several of them still recall times when they were in charge of Wolf Lake and losing the battle that left them scattered to the winds. Surprisingly, they aren't all that interested in retaking their former glory, and just want some equal footing and be allowed to do their own thing, rather than having to worry about pacification forces tearing through their settlements every few years. It's understandable. In other news, I found out what Avery and Mike were going on about a few days ago. Apparently, Avery said that there was a way to save his soul, but he had to give himself to the church. Mike took it pretty hard and retaliated by suggesting Avery was also in a pact just like him, just with another organization. The clerics were just warlocks with another name. She didn't like that one bit. And I'm going to go ahead and end this section here. I appreciate y'all sticking around and reading this story. I'm sorry they're not nearly as long as I would like to make them, but while I'm recording, I'm also coughing and sneezing, and god damn, does it tear my throat up something terrible when doing this. We're slowly crawling on up to 100,000, and eventually we'll get there, but only with your help. You know how it works. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so you know when the videos are released through the week. And then you can sit back, relax, and listen to these lovely stories. This has been Guard Bro, and I will see you next time.